Okay, we are live. Bear with me. We are going to try and get onto our Facebook. Let's see. There. I think I hear myself on this. Okay. We are live on Facebook, I believe. Let's take a look. The wheels are spinning. We are live on YouTube. Stream health looks good. We are good everywhere. I am closing this out. And let's go into the YouTube page, make sure we're good. So this little pre-show stuff going on here, just making sure we are rocking and rolling. I see Iographer is live now. I see my, I think I need to move over a little bit. <laughs> Let's see where this is going to take us. Okay, Rampant Design is in the house. We'll have you invited on in a second, Rampant. You hear me okay? Video okay? Awesome. Okay. So we are going to get going in a second. Do you like my new um, uh, Alfred Hitchcock bobblehead? <laughs> Wanted to have something cool up there. I got a Steve Jobs coming too. So I'm going to say my two people that I love are bobbleheads. Uh, we are waiting for Steve Albanese, who's going to be on the show. And I'm hoping he will be there. Uh, I'm going to jump over to Facebook for a second. Um, so all you people on Facebook and YouTube, if you would jump over to uh, our Crowdcast page, uh, you can really participate a lot more. Let me comment where we are. Uh, hold on. All the hip people are over here, but you can certainly stay there and watch it. It's just uh, your comments might be delayed a little bit uh, as I'm trying to run the show. So this is where we are on. And on, uh, let's see, here's my YouTube stream. To imagine that we can do all this live streaming in our comfort of our house and go out to a bazillion people. Okay. Uh, let me say hi. So Steve Dollar, hello. Howard, hello. Uh, Michael, hello. All my, my usual people are here. I'm happy to see you all. Um, so this is a new show that I'm doing. I just wanted to tell you guys about. So I'm doing a new show called Mobile Video Talk. Every Friday, we do the Iographer Show, but I'm going to change it to Mobile Video Talk. It's going to be a podcast as well. I'm going to interview some really interesting people today. I've got uh, Steve Albanese on, who owns an app called LearnBolt. Uh, he's going to walk us through that. It's really cool. Um, and then I've got the Mullins, Sean and Stephanie Mullen from Rampant Design Tools. Some of you might remember. And uh, we're going to talk about, um, uh, they had a 360 camera shootout. That is unbelievable. I mean, these guys just nailed it. And so I wanted to bring them on and, uh, and talk to them as well. And let's see, Steve Albanese is here. I saw, I see him. Okay, so, uh, wow. And Evan's saying he's on the Crowdcast app on his phone, and it works great. So that's awesome. I love that this is just so mobile. Um, super cool. All right, so Steve, I'm going to invite you. I see, uh, I see Tim Flanagan. I see Michael. All right, so you guys are there. Anyone on Facebook right now, certainly stay there if you want. But uh, if you'd like to jump over to Crowdcast. Dot io and then search for iographer you'll see our live show um i see uh, uh marisa debara of course from cork ireland who's always here um, watching us so kudos to you man that's just awesome and i'm still trying to debate of whether or not i can make it out to ireland so let's see we're going to go back to uh, learn bolt and we are going to um uh, sounds like romper room yeah uh we're going to invite steve on and then steve i'm going to um We'll talk as soon as you get on, and then we're going to start the show. I'll do a little intro so I can save this as a podcast later. So I'm going to invite you now, Steve. And uh, there you go. You should be invited. It says uh, you're invited to the screen, accepting and connected, accepted and connecting. So I love this because I can bring you guys on, as you saw last week at the at the, uh, the Facebook Live I had on um, – uh, Mario, I believe it was. Uh, I have to look and see the name. Sorry, I'm bad with names today. But he came on and told us a story about how he's doing stuff with Iographer and how amazing things he's doing. So I love this, the ability to do all this here um, to invite you guys all on. So 
as soon as Steve's on, we'll start the show. We'll start checking out his new his app, Learn Bolt, which is super cool. And Evan's got us on both the laptop and the phone. So yeah, check out the. Uh, I heard that the app was good. Yes, sir. I see you say, "Hey, Dave, are you unable to get on?" It says accepted and connecting. Please invite again. I'm removing you and I'm going to, should I ban? Not ban, invite. Uh, there we go. Um, Reprompt, yep. So this is Steve's first time on here, so let's give him a little uh, leeway here. Uh, the Mullins uh, got in contact with me and we did a test the other day and it, was, it went really well. So I'm excited to have uh, all of you guys on today. And while Steve's trying to get on, let's go back to Facebook. Uh, anyone there or in the YouTube channel, uh, jump on over to um, to our uh, Crowdcast. So crowdcast.io uh, slash iographer. You should see our live show here. And uh, super cool. Michael's on his podcast. Uh, so it says you're accepted and connecting, Steve. Hopefully this will work. He is in Boston, so maybe the Boston area doesn't have very good Wi-Fi or, or internet. <laughs> As I'm joking, I love Boston, one of my favorite cities. If it wasn't so damn cold in the winter, I might even move to Boston. But alas, I can't handle that. So are you interested in three? There's a poll down below here. If you're interested in 360 video, um, type in there yes or no. We got three votes already, so have some fun with the poll. We'll look at my analytics really quick. And I see, um, this is so cool. It shows me where all of you are, are at and where you're coming from and super cool. And I'll jump back here. If you have any questions, I believe you can suggest or put a question in there. And Steve is still trying to get on. I'm not sure, oh, you're not able to get on? Are you on uh, Chrome? Should be on Chrome and you should be fine uh, inviting. Yes, uh, I'll remove you again and I will invite you to screen. Let's see, what does this mean? Invite to screen uh, Steve Albanese, yes. And there it is. It says you're invited. And we're waiting to have you on, sir. Of course, we should have done a run through with this, but um, uh, which paid version? Of, I'm using the, that's a great question. I almost clicked out. So let me see. Um, I used the, I think it's like a pro one. It's like uh, 89 a month or something like that. Or, huh. Um, uh, let's see, should be coming in here. Do you want me to remove you and reconnect? Let's see one more time. Restarting the browser. Okay. Yeah. Do all that. And then I'll re I'll reinvite you. And the Mullins are on standby on the tarmac waiting for the, uh, flight into here. Tarmac. Yes. That's my new word for the day. Tarmac. And if you're watching on uh, Facebook or YouTube, uh, this is um, Mobile Video Talk. I'm Dave Basulto, CEO of Biographer. We're going to go live in a few moments. Well, we are live now, but we're going to start the show in a few moments. We're just waiting for a little technical difficulties um, from our one of our guests, and hopefully we'll get him on soon. Uh, can't get on Crowdcast for some reason. Okay, no worries. I'm just about to open my 7 Plus Biographer and get oh, turn, oh nice. Michael, ready to go. Just answering some stuff over on the uh, Facebook page. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if Steve's back here, logged back in. Okay, so now I'm going to invite you and say yes. And you should be able to come on in. Oh my God, I see somebody. And do I hear him? Hello. I hear him. All right, everybody. That's Steve Albanese from Learn Bolt. And I told you the Boston people are a little slow. I mean, we're much faster out here in LA. So let's don't hold that against him. Um, 
But I'm glad to see you here. You got your hard hat on because it's going to be a hardcore session here. And uh, we're excited to have you. Yeah. So let me uh, let me do a quick intro. And then um, do you know how to share your screen and all that? You see the little screen uh, share? I, I, I did the test earlier and everything okay. worked fine with the link. So Okay. I'm and if not, let me um, – I'm going to open up uh, QuickTime here. And I'm going to – QuickTime's going to be my window to bring in um, – uh, learn bolt on my iPad if we need to, if we want to do that. Okay. So let's go here and we're going to go iPad Pro and we'll have learn bolt running. Let's see. Okay. Almost Smart. there. All right. Okay. I've got that set up. So can you see my screen? I, I, uh, I see, I see the exact same screen. It's perfect. Oh, so wait. I, uh, I see the screen now. Yes, I do. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut out of my, um, on my uh, beautiful face here and just go to the, uh, the screen share. Is that cool? Uh, well, let me do an intro first and then we'll, can we okay. go to that after? Okay. Sure. All right, all right, guys, here we go. Hey everybody, Dave Basulto, CEO of Biographer. Welcome to mobile video talk episode one my new show called Mobile Video Talk, which we're going to do every Friday. Uh, we're going to bring on some great guests. And for my inaugural uh, episode, I decided to bring in some heavy guns so it make me look good and smart. Um, I've got the amazing Steve Albanese here. So hello, Steve. Hello. And in the tarmac waiting, we have uh, Sean and Stephanie Mullen from Rampant Design Tools that are uh, going to show us an amazing 360 camera shootout that they did. So very, uh, very, very cool. A uh, quick comment. Someone says you look like the cable guy. So just you got that going <laughs> for you. Uh, so <laughs> really quickly, Steve is the CEO and inventor of an app called LearnBolt. And uh, we had an agrifer really excited. We're going to do some stuff with him. And he's going to tell us all about LearnBolt and how it works. And uh, so we'll let him go. Um, I'm going to hide myself too so that they can go, uh, you can go have more screen time. So Steve, take it away. Tell us about LearnBolt. Okay, great. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to switch over here and, and try to bring this to uh, full screen. So we got a black screen now. <laughs> Did we lose you? Did you click out? Hello? Um, did I come back on? Should I come back on? Okay, well, we're waiting for Steve. He might have closed his browser. I promise you, LearnBold is super cool and you want to watch this. So, <laughs> did you need another invite? Oh, you did. You clicked out. Okay, let's re invite you. I promise you this guy is smart as can be, but this is his first time. <laughs> I tease you, Steve, you're amazing. <laughs> Let's give him back on the show here. We might do a quick restart. Or I can edit this, can't I, Sean? I can cut from the intro to when we start up again. Let's see. Invite. Is the invite working? Is the invite working, Steve? Michael, how you doing? Michael was on my show last week. That was awesome. Uh, Steve invited you again. Maybe you gonna redo. Want to redo the uh, redo your app? Hello, hello. Yeah, I see. You. I see you typing, but I don't see you. I've invited you like two times. Uh, maybe we need to uh, have you re redo your. Uh, Redo your uh, browser again. Meanwhile, this is very interesting television. I'm going to bring in my screen now. Let me see. I guess I can show something interesting. Let's see. Did I lose all my... There we go. Um, how do I share? So I share here. Application of the movie recording. So when he gets a chance to come back on, this is the app. It's called LearnBolt. Um, super cool. You're back in. Okay. So let's see if we can we can get you back in here. This is LearnBolt. Uh, 
on my iPad Pro. Looks like this. You have all these libraries of stuff in there. It's super cool for training and stuff. Think like lynda.com, but beyond that on your laptop. Okay, I'm in. Oh, you're back in. Okay, let me let me get rid of my screen there. And let me see where I am. Okay, so um, we'll just keep going from here. And uh, you're going to take it over and show the... Uh, so you see when you want to go down, this little hide screen thing there. I think, did you click on the X last time? Uh, I must have. Okay. So I there's this, there's a little hide screen there for you to um, to show, to go down. Sorry, I'm such a noob here. So the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Ready to take it away? All right. Yeah, I'll just keep that screen up there. Okay. I'm going to close mine. Okay. Where am I? Hide. I can actually... You want me to hide your screen? I can hide your screen from my controls. Sure. Okay, so we're going to hide Steve, and we're going to talk all about LearnBolt. You're on. Take it away, sir. Oh, can you hear me? I hear you. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is, is just start off, just kind of give you guys an overview of LearnBolt. Um, and I created a little uh, uh, what we call a learn path. Um, so I'm going to actually use the application to start off with the demonstration here. So in general, what is LearnBolt? It's a, uh, we, we call it a new breed of training solution. Uh, I call it a, a training development delivery system. So it goes from the conception of training need to the collection, organization, and delivery all within one system. And um, so with LearnBolt, an iPad, and the, the great iographer gear, we see it as a, a complete system where you can go from start to finish. Um, so, you know, what is it? Oh, we lost your audio for a second. Hello? Yep, hear you now. Hello? So, the general concept of emergence of all the different uh, devices into, into what I call a super device in the iPad and uh, been in the training environment for a while and kind of saw the opportunity to build an application that really could leverage the amazing capabilities of our, our smart devices, our, our iPads, um, iPhones, et cetera. So, um, and in addition to that, kind of bouncing off the concept of, many of you probably know about app, app smashing. So there are a million apps out there, so you can really do just about anything. And we really see LearnBolt as kind of the hub there where you could tie all this stuff together. So um, just getting into it, what does LearnBowl consist of? Well, there are three major components. Um, one is what we call our, uh, the first is um, basically we have the ability to collect, which is our media library. So we can collect content from anywhere, from Dropbox, Google Drive, Instagram, you name it. We can curate content and put it in a content management system. The next is uh, the learn paths. And we've created learn path types, um, which are basically structures that help you organize the content into a, a nice, neat package. And then finally um, is the cloud. And this is, um, so all the information that you might be gathering on your iPad um, is immediately uploaded into the cloud, any edits that you made. So the added beauty for that is really it allows you to quickly share uh, that content. Uh, application. So I'm at the home Here I'm going to go ahead. options as far as the application so there's a there's a free version that you can download right now and try it and it's a it's a freemium tiered system so there's there's a plus version of starter and then I'm in the premium version which adds some roster and, and reporting features so I'm going to go ahead and tap at the roster and what you can do uh, with the application is you can go ahead and add some user, users and I added Dave earlier you can manually add in some users or I could go to um, maybe Dropbox and just add in or import a CSV file. And I could go in and grab some guys, pull them in, and um, 
and import them right into the roster. Now, this user is on this roster, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, so you have a full roster, and within the roster, you can define different roles. So for example, um, I can have uh, learners, educators, uh, supervising it, and administrators. And um, an, ad an administrator basically owns the account, can buy things. A supervisor can add people to the roster and create content. An educator can create content. And a learner is more of uh, just like an employee that would consume or, or view the content. Okay, so let's get out of there. And the next, I'm going to get into the media library. And so here you can just start grabbing content. And you'll notice the interface is pretty consistent. Um, up in the uh, top left-hand corner, I can get back to the home screen, but there's a plus button. And, and I'm going to go ahead and hit add. And here I can just start adding content. So for example, if I wanted to go grab text, I could grab it from Dropbox, Evernote, uh, even from an email. Let's just go ahead and grab some images. So say, for example, um, I needed to grab something from Dropbox or from Google Drive. I'll go ahead and, and get into a folder here and just uh, grab a few images. Now, when you talk about text, are you talking about like uh, like PDF files or docs and things like that? Uh, really, you can grab uh, you can grab text image, or I'm sorry, you can grab uh, text files. You can grab PDF files. You can grab Word docs. Um, so the concept here is kind of a uh, you know like a, a a page of information. Yep. Um, it could be a PDF, etc. Got it. So I'm just pulling some some information, some images in here. Oh, I to grab the huge one. <laughs> okay. So let's go back. So you can import that that content. Get out of here. Okay. So if I wanted to grab uh, a PDF, I could go in, um, just go and grab a text document. So let's get out of there. So here's a PDF, uh, an article for PDF. So once I pull in the content, um, what you can do is you can start tagging it. So for example, um, Here's an FAQ document for Iographer. Now, what we try to do um, with this uh, with this application is really leverage um, what you can do with a mobile device. So I can go ahead and tag it, and I can say um, FAQ comma um, and put all those tags in there, searchable later. Um, other things that you can do within the inter within um, the uh, media is I could go ahead and I could put this in share mode. So it's a groups of assets. Um, so the concept here is you basically just pull in a different content in this media library. It's searchable. I can look at just the video content. Um, I can search for individual assets or I could go ahead and share it. So now what I'm going to do is A well thought out structure designed to help you organize the content. So, say you need to get a, a person up and running, say, to change the shower head in a um, in similar here, and that in the top left hand corner, I have. Mm -hmm. And within, I don't know. Uh, are you frozen? I'm not see. I don't know if you're frozen. Is this has the screen changed? Uh, I see still on the learning path library. So I don't know what you've been seeing. I've been looking at the screen. Um, um, I just see. I see the learning path library. Okay. There you go. And, oh, it turned over to yeah. How? How to okay. lesson report tour all that. So what I did here is I hit the plus screen. Uh, mm -hmm. I 
I'm going to create a learn path. So we created these learn path structures, or learn path types like how to's, lessons, tours, guides, reviews. They're really meant to, to help you get up and running uh, in just starting and, and developing content. So I'm going to go ahead and select lesson, and then I'll just select a theme. And this theme is basically just what it look like, looks like. And I'll go ahead and just call this showerhead and a quick intro for Jose. Mm -hmm. OK, and I could even put additional description. But now that I hit enter, what it's doing is it's creating a learn path based on the lesson type structure. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, it's kind of like look, looking like a slide deck, but the, the beauty of LearnBolt is to really to cater towards various learning styles and knowledge levels. So let's make this a little bit more visually appealing. So you'll notice as we get through the interface, tapping on the screen allows me to do different things. So I could go ahead and go to my library and let's just find, um, let's find shower. Okay, so I'm going to find an image of shower and that becomes my background. Um, now, You'll notice the interface. The interface basically just floats over the top. I'm hitting the button up in the top right-hand corner, the show hide button. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding, creating an outline or a structure for this. So this is where the template structure of lesson comes in. So these different slides are really meant to get you up and running as far as how do I organize it. So I might want to organize it this way. I'm going to start off with a, a video introduction and then we maybe have a how and this is going to be relatively simple and I'll just do a conclusion so I'll hit enter there and in very short order I have a structure where I want to start adding content so now what I can do is I can go back to that slide and um, say I wanted to add some video so I just tap on the screen and I could add something from the library or say I just wanted to record something so I'm going to go to my camera and here we are and uh, let me see if I can put something down for Jose so um, Hey, Jose, so we have a problem in one of the uh, rooms. We need to change the shower head. Don't worry, I've provided all the information below uh, in the media links, so check them out. If you have any questions, uh, please, don't con please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks. All right, so now I have that video in there, and I could go ahead and um, just use that, or I could retake it, et cetera. I could go ahead and maybe just um, trim it up a little bit and just hit use. Okay, I don't know if you lost my screen there. Hello? Yeah, um, your screen share I think dropped, but uh, you still I still hear you. Hello, hello. I see you. I see your screen share about to come back. Let's see. Uh oh. There we go. Okay, you ready to keep going? Yep. Okay, let me okay, so let me hide. Let me hide you, and there you go. All right. So I just recorded this video, and now. Um, it's been, um, it's, it's part of this slide. Mm -hmm. And now I could go ahead and just start adding down at the bottom, you'll know these, um, we have what are called media links. So here I'm gonna go ahead and grab some, uh, put in a text document. And I have a job aid for changing the shower head, so I'm gonna go ahead and search for that. And there it is, and I just pull that content in, okay? So now it pulled this in from the media library, and now I could just start adding additional content. So once again, LearnBolt caters towards various learning styles and knowledge levels. So what I could do is just go ahead and maybe start adding some images. Um, I mean, I like this because we can set up like uh, a storyboard kind of thing of what work, the workflow you need and then just send someone out. I mean, I see a student going out there and, and filming what needs to be filmed after that. Yeah, it... Um, once again, it's 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 really it's really flexible. You can just start adding content. You can kind of think of it as in, in today's world, there's we we have content in all these different places. LearnBolt is really a great tool for curating. I kind of started this whole thing off and thinking, hey, you have an idea for learning. What do you do? Right. 
you know, do you grab a piece of paper? You know, but today we communicate at a much higher level. I say LearnBold is designed for what we call the now generation because I'm sharing, I'm sending text messages, et cetera. But this kind of allows you to put a, you know, I see this as a, a really elaborate text message. So I can curate all this different content. Um, you know, maybe I wanted to add the video in here. I could go ahead and search that in my library. Um, And so now there's a video that I'm adding it to. So you can kind of see the process here. Now, other things are more dynamic is like, say I needed to find the shower head. So I could go ahead to the web and just say, um, Moen 63, oh, let's say 6403. Oh, wow. So you bring in the stuff like that. Yeah, that's cool. So I need that. And now that becomes part of my library. So I could tell them, um, hey, Jose, uh, you may need to order this part. Um, use the Marriott account, period. And so I see it as a more dynamic way. Um, I could go to the next slide and, you know, I could just add some text here. Um, in this slide we're going to show you the specifics on how to replace the shower head and now i could go ahead and just start adding images you know so you can kind of see just building this stuff on the fly mm -hmm. um, just add that yeah it's an awesome way to just kind of have everything curated ready to go this is awesome you know you can add audio um to the slide um Hey, Jose, uh, check out the media links below. So you can kind of see I'm building this content um, as we go along here. Um, you know, I can add I can add web, you name it. So really the beauty of this um, comes into the sharing of it. So I could go ahead and now I created this learn path. I could go ahead and select it and go ahead and hit share. Now if I go ahead and hit add here, I can go to my roster and I put Dave on the roster earlier so I can go ahead and select him. I could also just select a group and do that, but I'll go ahead and hit share. And so now if Dave refreshes, he should see this. Okay, let me see. I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Where is it? Movie recording. There we go. Okay, you should see my screen now. And then how do I, re so I go back to this, uh, are you sure you want to log out? No. How do I? Re no, you just hit refresh. Where is there, is there a refresh Look button? the top. Oh. Yeah, top right. Circle. I knew that. And magic appears, dark magic. And there's my shower head, which my wife is going to make me go do now to clean the shower head. So you'll notice I, I, what I went to in the learn path library here is we have a reporting button. So I could go ahead and hit the report button and now I could see what the activity of the users are. So if Dave was to swipe through this content, he would see, uh, you know, I would be able to see what he's going through, et cetera. Um, so one of the things that I, I, I didn't note earlier is that, um, in the learn path library or in the media library and I was capturing the content, all of that stuff is immediately uploaded. So the added bonus here is that if you're building some content and you need to share it out to one or thousands, all of that content is already in the server. So when I hit share, they basically immediately get it and start consuming the content. And one unique thing about LearnBolt is we really never package the content is it's assembled when a person views it. So it's not like sending this big file to them, et cetera. Ah. Um, well, I mean, I'm just thinking outside the box here. Like when I was a teacher, this would have been amazing to do like my first period media class. I could have had someone, uh, filming these things, putting them together. Uh, and, and then the other classes would have access to them. And then the same class would, um, have an archive of it and just be able to, you know, come back and watch what we, what we learned today. You know, I, I love it. Yeah. It, uh, I mean, there's, there's, our original target market was business, but we really use this for all different things. So for example, um, I coach wrestling. And um, so the wrestling team is using this to capture different videos on, um, 
you know, different, uh, different moves. And then the coaches are actually sharing that out to the, to the wrestlers. And they're able to see, um, here's an, ex- I don't know why this isn't refreshing here. Um, but, um, really there's a wide variety of, of potential uses here. Um, you know, so, uh, and what, what are we looking at for, uh, for pricing structures? So it's, um, the pricing is there's a, it's a freemium tiered system. So you can download it for free and you basically get a basic account and you get a hundred megabytes of storage and then, um, three shares. Uh, it goes up from there where we have a, um, a plus account and that, um, gives you more storage and, um, more shares. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have a starter, then a plus. So it's nine ninety five a month, nineteen ninety five a month for plus, and then a premium account uh, is that's where you get um, the reporting features as well as the roster. Um, you know, there's ability to export the the reporting information, etc. So a lot of extra features in the premium side, um, and then we really can customize that to the number of seats. So that's typically. Uh, $29.95 a month, but uh, we do have a special deal for IAGRA for customers. So um, there's a three month trial that uh, we're offering for the premium account. And um, I can share that with you guys later. There's a, um, we just um, uploaded or just um, submitted uh, LearnBolt 1.8 to the app store. And it's now in the store. And there's a new feature within the, um, Within the uh, within the application, if you sign up for a free basic account, um, you'll if you go to the profile screen, you'll see an upgrade button, and there you can go ahead and tap the upgrade button, and you'll see re- redeem um, promo account. And we created a promo account for um, Iographer, which is Iographer, and that will give you a three month free trial. Wow, that's awesome! In addition, it gives in addition, it gives you a 33% discount on the script subscription. So you actually get a premium account for $19.95. Double whammy. I love this. I think we're going to need to share this out to the uh, to our newsletter too. <laughs> this is great. So where, where are um, you seeing um, start, the biggest bang for your buck? Like, like what like big companies? I know you have some construction companies and and uh, corporations like that, right? Yeah, the um you know, our target market is really the emerging business. So imagine um, like in today's world, if you go into a business, a lot of times the training is done by shadowing or it's, um, mm-hmm. you know, their information is all over the place. And what we're trying to do is my original thought was providing a, a, a tool for those emerging businesses. You know, they're not going to invest in a, in, a, in a large learning management system. Um, really LearnBolt kind of fits in underneath there, but we were lucky enough to land a big client uh, right off the bat, and um, which was Marriott. And one of the things that they were telling us is that their internal training and development system, their learning management system had become so cumbersome that it would take them a really long time to develop this content. So what we're trying to do in general is to create a new breed of training solution, which I call a training development and delivery system. It really, um, with, like I mentioned earlier, with today's uh, uh, iPad or iPhone, the quality that you can capture in audio, video, and images, the integration within cloud service really allows you to kind of leap, um, leap over some of those initial hurdles that you might have needed with a learning management system. So, you could start building content all from the iPad, immediately sharing it, and then reviewing the content and the, the reporting right away. So this new breed that I'm trying to, to, to get out there, I actually call it a TDS. It, it goes from the conception of training need to the collection or So um, the, the smaller market, yeah, the smaller, I mean, I really, you know, in developing this product, I really see it as a, as a wide, um, you know, could be used by a lot of different people. So the teacher might be able to use it. You know, there's, when you build something like this, you find all these different crazy ways that you might use it. So for example, I use it in my house. Uh, we, 
I collect. So when I go to the media library on my iPhone, so on the iPhone, if I'm changing a light bulb, I'll go ahead and snap a picture of the light bulb because I always forget what light bulb I have to get. And <laughs> that's, bro, that's a great idea. <laughs> and, and then, you know, so uh, in the home account, I have how to change the channel on the TVs for my wife. We have a pool and I've had my son go through and we've recorded different videos and learn paths on how to change the filter, uh, you know, how to clean, uh, you know, how to put on the hot tub, all those different things. So it's my wife can just get, grab her iPhone and just search that stuff and just instead of asking me. And so for that end, for the free version, I think it's kind of an added bonus. You can just start, you know, we have recipes in the, in the media library, all the different things. So imagine a big thing is just curating the content. You know what mm -hmm. you want, and you put it in this library, and I have everything I need. I can go ahead and search those individual things and look at them directly. But if I want to take someone through a path of learning, then I might use the learn path. Mm -hmm. And so using it at home, um, you know, the small businesses, um, you know, coaches, uh, teachers, um, we really have done a lot of different things Um you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at this going, God, would this be the way that I should use uh, for onboarding my new iographer users, you know, have this learn path of this is how you um, install your lenses. This is how you um, add a microphone. This is how, you know what I mean? And it's all right there on their phone all the time because they have any questions. So I, I see some great applications for this. I mean, the um, it's like, so before the, uh, um, before the presentation, I sent Dave a learn path, um, which had me do a little intro here. And then um, what I did is I included, so I included down at the bottom um, a trailer for LearnBolt. Mm -hmm. So we could learn a little bit about it. And then I also included a little getting started video. Welcome to LearnBolt. In this tutorial, we'll provide a quick. So yeah, it this really. Is great. It's just an organizational tool. Um, you know, uh, here's the web page which uh, we're going to use for the promo um, account, and it just kind of embedded that just to kind of give them a tour, so you can kind of do web tours. Um, now, now so, if we have like an enter enterprise plan, say Iographer does, um, and we sent out a thing, you know, hey, here's, uh, you know, when you buy your Iographer, here's your get started learn path. Does that, do they, uh, is it simple as them just downloading the app um, and, and logging in and creating a free account or is, is there more whistles and bells to jump through? Uh, you can do it uh, several ways. You could, you could add them to the roster. So you could have, the only reason, the reason you might want to add a person to a roster is to keep track, you know, if you wanted to say, okay, they went through this learn path, they didn't go through this learn path. Um, more of the, the user activity reporting. But there's another way that you can share within LearnBolt. So I could go ahead and select, say I wanted to share um, you know, this specific learn path. I could go ahead and I select it and I hit share. I can actually share as a guest. So I could just send it, type in someone's email and just send it to them that way. Um, the, the downside of that is that I don't, I don't get the activity reporting. So you could actually just grab someone from your, if you want to pull it in. So we really have tried to make it easy. Yes, the person does need the app to, to consume the content, but as far as a, a content creator, um, you could either share them with a roster um, and kind of have them in the list. So for example, say Dave, you had, um, users that just came on board in the last three months. You could go ahead and create a group of those users and, um, or maybe you wanted to, to, to have users in Boston. You wanted to give them trouble about not being able to get on uh, uh, Crowdcast. So you could mm -hmm. create a, uh, you could go ahead and, 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 and say, I'm gonna create a new group and we could say, uh, And then I could just start adding those users to that. And then when I go ahead and I go ahead and hit share, I can just select group crowd crowdcast. And let me get that where to go. 
Yeah, this would be a great time saver than just saying, oh, here, go to this YouTube and where's the YouTube link and blah, blah, blah. Uh, right. This might be great for me. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. So you go awesome. ahead and thank you. So you would just select them, go ahead and hit the group. Group. Oops, too many. So share, go ahead, roster, and then go to my groups and select them from the groups. This is perfect. Okay. That's so, great. Uh, well, thanks. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I don't know if anybody had any questions. Kind of a scattered. Any questions from the peanut gallery out there? Let's check around. Um, but I want to thank Steve for coming on and showing LearnBolt. Um, I was very impressed when I first saw this. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping you guys were too. Uh, I see it as a former teacher that the applications are ginormous. So, um, but I see this now. Maybe it's something I want to do for biographer because I'm, I'm getting asked a lot to onboard uh, to do some more onboarding stuff. Like, you know, literally, how do I snap my biographer, my iPad, and my biographer? How do I put on my lens? Um, you know, and I actually have some of those videos, but it's like, uh, you know, we, we I'd love to have an automated process. Um, so I totally get where this is headed. I think it's really super cool. Um, oh, someone, uh, Chris wants to know, is there a way to, uh, is there a bulk way to add users? Yes. So um, you would go to roster and you would go ahead and hit, you can import a CSV file. So say you had a, a list of users in, um, in an Excel spreadsheet. You can go ahead and, and select them and I could hit, uh, select all and hit import and it would in the, import them all um, depending on how you set up the csv file you could actually predefine if they were learners or um or you know what role they were in the account but it's just one button you can import a uh, hundred or or one two ten a thousand and so how it works here though is that you'll you'll notice um up here in the top right hand corner of the roster there's uh, seats, and right now we're at 30% of the seats, so we have 50 seats. So in the basic or in the in this like the premium account to start off with, there's 30 seats. So, for example, we're working with uh, some large companies, so they might have a thousand seats or 10,000 seats. Um, so uh, it really is is it depends on. So that's where the pricing changes. Um, if you want to have uh, 50 users on your roster or a thousand um so i hope that answered your question but yes you can bulk um add users um, quickly very cool and michael on uh, youtube said or martin very impressive so you people are giving you some thumbs up on all this this is fantastic Thank um, you. awesome steve so everyone check out learnbolt.com and the learn bolt app Download it, and then, uh, like you said, use iographer, and we'll get you uh, three months free. You said, and, and then, uh, and then a lower thirty-three percent off. That's amazing. I love yeah. it. So, what you'll do is you'll download download the app. Uh, you need to download the app for creation on the iPad. There are several features an iPhone version of it, but it's primarily viewing. But there's some um, editing capability in the iPhone. But just open it up and then hit pro profile. And you'll notice in the in the profile screen, you'll see above in the top right hand corner. It's not here because I'm already premium. You'll see the upgrade account, okay. uh, upgrade, button. and you can tap that. And the um, the promo code is iographer, and uh, all lowercase. And if you have any questions, um, you know, Dave, you want to share my email, or they can contact me that way. Yep, I'll, I'll post this up. Uh, most of you guys, I believe, are either with the. Uh, Facebook group or on our YouTube channel, but I think most of you are also in our uh, in our mail uh, email list. So I will send a nice email out about all this and and uh, and get you guys going with Learn Bolt. But Steve, thank you so much for being my first guest ever on this brand new show. With even with our little technical difficulties, we had a great time today, and um, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Okay. All right, guys, hang on. We're going to bring on the Mullins, if I can figure out how in the heck to bring the Mullins on. So let's bring me back here. There I am. Okay. That was really exciting. Uh, Steve's got a cool app. I've been playing with it all day. Um, I, and now I'm thinking, 
if I can make a bunch of, uh, of cool videos to onboard people um, with iographers, you know, literally, how do I, how do I add lenses? How do I do this and that? So I totally get it. This is super cool. Um, so download it and play with it. It's not going to cost you a dime. Uh, I'm going to invite the Mullins on, Sean and Stephanie Mullen from Rampant Design Tools. And um, it looks like, wow, look at, see, I don't know, Florida people, maybe they're a little faster than uh, than the Boston people. I don't know. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. I hear, I hear one Mullen, yes. Stand by. Stand by. We've got a little circle. So, guys, uh, just a little preface. Um, um, Sean and Stephanie Mullen have rampant design tools. I think you've seen them on um, our uh, our shows before. Um, they're I can't get rid of them since I met them, but um, oh. they're, they're amazing <laughs> people. Um, and and so, since I don't see you in the screen yet, I can feel I can talk. Oh, I think you're connecting now. Uh oh, I see possibly some faces coming. Anyhow, we sell lots of their things in our uh, post tools on iographer.com. I use them all the time, all my intros, everything. Um, it's okay. super cool stuff. But obviously, they uh, don't know how to uh, click on this and get this yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. It's Crowdcast, my friend. This is not exactly a legit this software is, yet. So this is gonna... legit. This is big time television. <laughs> We're going to bounce out real quick and see if re, uh, rebooting uh, Chrome. Re refresh, refresh Chrome. Yeah, no worries. Okay, I'm back. Um, so... Uh, what else? Some um, updates. Let's see. We've got the uh, iPhone 7 Plus has been the biggest launch ever. I'd like to give one away today to someone out there who doesn't have one yet uh, as I do my giveaways. Um, some other cool things are going on. I'm doing some big audio tests right now with all of our microphones. So I'll have some uh, some demos to show you. Doing a um, shootout. If any of you have 12 times lenses, if you would like to share any of your um footage with us with your 12 times lens uh you will get a uh gift card to the iographer store of uh, 50 dollars. so go shoot some stuff with the 12x lens and get in touch with me dave at iographer.com and uh i'll tell you how to share the footage with us so we can use it in an upcoming show and um i will give you a um uh 50 gift card to spend in the store so let's see are you do you need to re-invite no here we go. I hear audio. Just so you know, this worked fine the other day. <laughs> Maybe I should invite everyone before the show starts. Yes. Let's see. Invite to screen. Um, Michael, I know you're out there, Michael. And... Um, I just want to tell you, it wasn't this much easier when you and I did it. I mean, obviously, we're from California, so I think the East Coast people have problems with technology. All the, all the, the alligators in Florida. Exactly. It worked fine. <laughs> Except you, Steve. Steve, you live in Boston. There's no alligators there. I love Boston. Let's see. The Mullins on screen. I see something on screen, but it's a black screen. Boston strong, absolutely. Toggle video, toggle video. Dude, you're killing, Dave. Yep. You you, you just I was just there. You, you shut me off here. Hold on, hold on one second. Uh, this it, when you do that, you get the OT publisher connection error. This is definitely a crowdcast thing. So, so just let me let me reboot and uh, I'll I'll come back back in. All right, you figured it out. Well, I know what the issue is. Yeah, but it's okay. Crowdcast. But I'll be right back. One second. Sure. Everyone blames everybody else, but really, I mean, I got on, and Steve Albanese got on last week. So, how can we really blame Crowdcast? It's amazing, actually. I like Crowdcast a lot, <laughs> but I'm um, sure it definitely has its uh, its glitches, and uh, as we're seeing. Uh, but I think it's uh, it's super cool. Um, Sam Wu is out there. Sam, you need to join up on our Crowdcast thing so you can uh, ask some questions. Live is always fun, Chris says. Bill O'Reilly likes to do it live. Oh, man, that's funny. Okay. Rampant's accepted. Yes, technology is great until it doesn't work. Absolutely. So it looks like the Mullins are accepting. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I take it back. Northeasterners rock, yes. 
it's the uh, southeasterners or the alligators that are having problems um, now. So um, southeasterners, I take back from the northeasterners. Remember the day I had such a great day while we're waiting. I'll tell you a story. I had such a wonderful time in Boston. First time, like early in iographer life, I was invited out by the Celtics and uh, was able to uh, go to their offices and then do a tour of Boston, like everything I could possibly see in Boston for a day. Um, and it was a great time. But I hear the Mullins breathing. I promise you they're very entertaining. They're whispering now, so like I don't hear them. Uh, Crowdcast is just not liking us tonight. I don't know why it worked yesterday, but not today. Um, do you have any, can you screen share? I see something. I see a screen share. So now do your, uh, do you do your quick time camera as your camera? <laughs> I bet you that would work. Oh no, you don't. You don't, still don't have a, a you don't have a, a camera attached to the QuickTime camera, do you? Yeah, I do. No, I, nothing's changed since yesterday. It's Crowdcast giving these lame, lame. Thing. It's just beta software, so it's just it's it's coming out with the I/O error. I/O, I/O, I/O. Well, while you're doing that, have Stephanie tell us all about what you guys were doing. Why don't you talk about 360 stuff? <laughs> This is radio now, Steph. So. Radio. Okay. So um, we did a 360 camera shootout, and we did a test between the um, sub-500 cameras. We actually got called up and uh, were asked by a, a client to say, what is your you know advice on a sub-500 360 camera? And we had no idea. So we were like, well, we'll, we'll find out for you. So we ended up testing uh, the Samsung 360, which is right now is the most popular. Uh, we tested the Theta S and the Nikon Key Mission 4K 360. Yes, that's all part of the title. And then we got at the very end, we did. Uh, we got called by a lot of people saying that we had to try the Insta 360 Nano, which is the only one out of this entire bunch that goes live, uh, can go Facebook Live 360 video. Um, so yeah, it was a very interesting shootout, and. Uh, and we both can agree that um, the Nano is poo-poo. It is. That's it's putting garbage. It gently, the Nano is absolutely <laughs> fire. If, if you seriously, this is, it's the worst camera I've ever used in my entire life. It is the, such garbage for two hundred dollars. You uh, you know you can't expect a lot, but you can certainly uh, want something that actually does what they say it does, and it doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah, I um, uh, Steve saying he had the same problem. Restart Chrome. Yeah, that's I'm on my fourth or fifth restart of Chrome. Uh, we went. And, this is the same issue we had yesterday. Um, I've even rebooted, but I'll try re restarting Chrome again. Be right okay. Back. All right. Momentum. Okay, they're restarting once again, and uh, we'll have them back. Okay, so Tim wants to know when will the Samsung Go Mic Mobile be ready? Okay, that's a great question, and the answer I have for you is we will start taking pre-orders at iographer.com. Uh, in May, um, late May, and it's going to deliver in June. So if you guys want to be one of the first to get that dual uh, microphone, um, I highly recommend pre-ordering it when it's ready because um, I think they're going to – everywhere I've gone, people want that. They, they've, I've, I've been offered three, four times the amount that it's worth at conventions because they want that microphone. So uh, the two microphones and the, and the mixer. Um, so I think it's tremendous. So if you get a chance, um, and so Steve, I just thought you'd say cool, but I just want you to know that the Lavalier version is going to follow in uh, late June, early July, they said. So that's a little bit behind the handheld versions, but it's on its way, and um, I'm going to be one of the first vendors to uh, to have it in my control. So I've already pre-ordered a bunch, and... Uh, uh, they're going to be amazing. I, I use it all the time, and it's just a, it's a great device. Especially, let me show you, see, what did I do recently? I'll pull this up. So I added, uh, where's the mixer? Here we go. So for those of you who don't know, this is the uh, Samson Go Mixer. Uh, no, Go Mic Mobile. Sorry, Go Mixer is by Roland. Go Mike Mobile by Samson puts on fits right on top of the iographer, so I can go right here. Iographer, 
Oops, see that open it. Sorry, I have in my other hand, I have microphones. So I've got it in there. Uh, plugs right in. Uh, and then I bought these two. Uh, so I, I had mic flags to my handhelds, and I bought some uh, shock, some um, windscreens here, and they sound fantastic. So you can totally brand yourself. I'm going to go to NAB just like this. I'm going to go interview people and get some cool content, and I'm going to have my brand sticking out everywhere. So go Mike Mobile. Uh, go and order your mic flags at mikeflags.com. Uh, 35 bucks and uh, cool stuff, man. Very really, really excited about uh, the wireless stuff that's coming on. Uh, the cost of the setup. So the uh, Michael Allegre asked me um, what the cost of the setup was. So uh, cost of the setup is uh, going to be around a $300 range now. Um, that's what they're saying. So, uh, but you get two microphones and you get the mixer and all the cables that you possibly need. Um, and you're good to go. And that's going to be for either the lab and the other one. So, oh, my God, the Mullins are back. Got to love web-based <laughs> nonsense. It's fun. Steve wants to know, uh, can we monitor input and playback? Yes, you can. You can plug in your headphones to this, and you can monitor. I'll do a whole demo of it um, really soon. Thank you. Uh, but more importantly, this is the Mullins people. Yeah. Everybody. Hello. And they, they are real people. They, they live in Florida. A brick wall. We are excited as hell to have them here. Um, so let's go. So Sean and Steph, um, I can't wait to see you guys at NAB, first of all. Yes, uh, yes. But you did what I have to say is the most amazing, thorough uh, investigation of 360 cameras on the planet. And had I waited, what, a week or so, I wouldn't have bought that crappy yeah. Insta Nano 360 because, oh, it goes to Facebook and it's 360 Live. There should be a class and, action lawsuit against that because it's it's a flat out lie. Uh, well, let's let's put it this way: it does go to Facebook, but it's it's like it's like playing Mario Brothers in the first version. <laughs> yes. Look, yeah. Yeah. It, it it caps out at one megabit at fifteen frames per second, so it's pretty much unusable. And they don't tell you that until you dive in, and then everyone blasts you on YouTube and Facebook for it looking like garbage. So wow. I'm going to hide my screen and let you guys go to work. So, all right. This so, is all about you now. So, as Dave said, we did a project for, a, for one of our clients, and they said, Hey, look, here's the deal. We're going to have 20 teams of two people, and we don't want to spend a lot of money. We want to keep the budget at or under $500. So, that was the challenge. They said, What, what exactly can we do in the world of 360 for 500 bucks? And it turns out not a lot, um, but we tested the Nikon Key Mission uh, 360, the Samsung Gear. 360, the Ricoh Theta S, and the Insta 360 uh, Nano. I mean, we should just throw it against the wall. It's, it's terrible. But let's do it. Let's do a destruction thing right now. We're we'll destroy it. Let's do it. No, no, no. We're, 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 we're sending it back. <laughs> so, for us, it was important to get uh, 360 video working. Photos were a bonus. Uh, but for us, it was the, the idea was tell me what I can get for 500 bucks and then tell me what kind of crazy workflow I'm going to get involved in. And it turns out that all these cameras except one have a pretty intense workflow that you wouldn't be necessarily used to because you don't uh, you don't uh, do these kinds of processes with regular with traditional HD video so um, especially for, for like the the new person that just wants to go make 360 video yeah yeah, think, yeah. If, if you don't cool. precisely, <laughs> precisely. Uh, if you don't know anything about 360 you're gonna invo uh, get involved with stitching uh, you're going to get involved with converting to equi rectangular. And then from there, you can trim it or you can uh, bring it into Final Cut or Premiere. But there's a lot a lot of steps before you can get to yourself to a traditional NLE. Um, so what is, what is stitching? Tell them what stitching is. So uh, every single one of these cameras uh, is two lenses. So at some point in time, at some point where the two lenses meet, there's a, there's a big feather in a line. And some cameras do it well. Some cameras do it not so great. But imagine a, a dirty uh, mask line in video with a feather. Um, we can you can load up. Uh, we can screen share here. So you basically get two video circles together that are like this for each for each of your lenses. So if you have two lenses here, you get two circles of video. And then you need an app to take those two circles and make them round. So you have to stitch the circles together, if you can imagine that in a circle, circular sphere, I guess. Um, so that's, no, that's the, that's exactly that's the stitching. Yeah. Um, and we were the equi rectangular, which is a very, very fun word too. Fun word. That you get to learn in three six the three sixty world. Um, basically, is taking those little circles and making them flat. So mm -hmm. 
once you have them flat like this, that's how Facebook, that's how YouTube and any other app reads the, uh, uh, I guess, the thing. So as you can see here, uh, this is the uh, Nikon Key Mission 360. And if you will, we will spin it when we get it to a higher quality. Is this, is this, oh, so there we go. So now it looks right, a lot better. Yeah. Here's, here's what you can yep. see. Now, anything that's directly in line may get lost like this. But you can see as the camera's going past, this is an icon key mission. It's not too bad when it, when it comes to the stitching. This is the front lens. This is the back lens, and it, which you know it gives you the ability to look anywhere you want. Um, so the challenge. I mean, the, the footage looks pretty nice on that one. For the yes. Nikon, it, it's cool, but I mean, it come, the Nikon comes in pretty contrasty. So, and I think they did this because mm. the, the prosumer market wants things with more chroma and contrast, whereas uh, a lot of people in our industry are like, well, hey, I want this as flat as possible. So you're not going to get that with the Nikon. Um, but the one cool thing about uh, about the Nikon that I have to stress, why well, it gets a terrible review on on uh, online, right? So it's, well, I, it, I actually didn't buy it from Amazon because I was reading all the reviews. Yeah, yeah, it gets like one and a half stars on Amazon, and and I understand why, but it's not the camera. So the camera itself is the easiest camera to use. It's yeah. like a GoPro. If you can shoot with a GoPro, you can use this camera. You literally have two buttons: record and photo. That's it. This thing doesn't do anything else. It's shockproof. It's waterproof. It's a GoPro 360, essentially, right? And mm -hmm. the great thing is all the stitching and everything, and all the uh, converting to equi rectangular. It's already done in here. By the time I pull it off the camera into my machine, I'm done. I'm ready to go. So if you're looking for something uh, stupid simple, the Nikon is at is where it's at. The problem with the Nikon and the reason why it gets the the ratings that it does is the app is so bad it makes you want to kill yourself in the most <laughs> glorious way you can imagine. It is the worst app ever made, and that's not a joke. It's super frustrating, and um, it's just poorly thought out. It rarely connects, and this is a fort a 4K camera and it defaults to HD. So regardless, you still have to go in one time and tweak your settings. It's, it's kind of annoying, but once you're so done- So now are you, are you talking about app on the phone or-, or Yeah, or app on the phone. Device? They, they okay. all have desktop apps and they all have phone apps. Um, okay. And uh, the phone app is the worst thing that's ever made. These desktop apps, they're all proprietary little apps and they're not that impressive. They look like something you'd get at like freeware or shareware. They're just not really well put together. Mm. Um, someone just said, will it blend? Yes, it will. Um, so anyway, we, <laughs> we, uh, we, we compared all these cameras. The Theta S is what was required, was, was recommended to us. And it's not a bad little camera. If you're into photographs, it's video is completely useless. So if you're looking for 360 video, don't bother. This is the camera that everyone said, Oh, this is the greatest camera ever. It's okay. Um, but so what case Casey Neistat, um, has on his things. Yeah, but he was heavily paid for that. Yeah, so uh, you know what? If I was paid, I'd say this thing is the greatest thing on earth. I'd wear it on my head. I'd, you know, I'd go everywhere. <laughs> it's, a, 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 it's a difficult workflow if you're a Mac user. If, you're, if you have a Windows machine or if you have an Android phone, life is good. A Samsung phone, life is easy for you. If you're a Mac user, you're going to have to run uh, Windows on your Mac. You're going to have to buy a PC or you're going to have to get a Samsung phone. There's just no way around it. Now, that changes on April 19th, which is like what? 10 days from now or something? Mm -hmm. The brand new Samsung Gear 360 2017, which is the worst name ever, it comes out. <laughs> it comes out. It doesn't look anything like this. Imagine this, but with a with a handle built into it. it. It works with your iPhone. It does 2K streaming. It does 4K video. So all in all, it's a much better camera. It's going to come in about 499. They just dropped this down to just above 200. So um, it really depends on on what you want to do. But and none, uh, none of these cameras lets you bring in external audio, do they? No, what you'd have to do is like shoot with a zoom or get some kind of a 3D mic and then marry that in post. But no, no, you're not going to do like that. For the, for the consumer, there's just no way. They're yeah, you, that. you're talking, you're yeah. talking, you know, that's the other thing is if, uh, that's the problem our client hired us for is when they went on YouTube to find workflows for this thing, it's all this random proprietary nonsense. Like, oh, I go over here to this machine and then I use this weird software and then I bring it over here and then I send it to my friend and then they mail it back to me. It's, it's the weirdest thing. It's like, no, guys, we have to come up with a, a legitimate workflow. This is a big corporation. They're not going to put up with, you know, random apps. Engineer, uh, IT directors at big companies don't like you running weird software, right? So the idea was to try to find them something that would work uh, and, and it would be stupid simple to use. And across the board, the Nikon won. Yep. It was the uh, easiest, like Sean yeah. said, the easiest to use. Uh, the apps in these devices are so convoluted, so difficult to use, so difficult to connect to. They all connect through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. or Bluetooth. And to do that, in a, if you're in a crowded situation, like if we went to a park here, like Disney or Universal, so many people are on their phones. So it's hard to get a signal to your to the device with your app. And it, it's just it's so frustrating. Yeah. And that's what we liked about the Nikon the most is you can literally just turn it on and shoot. You don't have to worry about anything. Now, 
you don't get any instant feedback. You don't have any of that instant gratification that we all love in today's world, but it's just kind of like, it's, do you want instant feedback or do you want good video? If that's what you're looking for, sub 500, the Nikon is definitely a plus. But if you're looking for just pictures, then they all do a really good job as far except- well, well, Actually, this, the Nano doesn't, doesn't the, do bad this in photos. Guy does, does good photos. So if you're looking for photos, but it lasts stuff, an hour. The battery, yeah, the this battery lasts is an terrible. hour. That's the ridiculous. Terrible. So and you have to add a. Um, uh, I don't know. Do all of them need some kind of a a, a drive, a, a compact flash or whatever? Yeah, that's DHC card. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Tim Flanagan just said something uh, important, and, and what he's saying is true. And, and I think the world is waiting because we all we all got bit by 3D television, right? So everyone's saying that VR slash 360 is the same thing. And yes, he said I don't understand the brouhaha about 360. And you know what? That was the that was what the client said. There's like, show us what we don't understand. And we're like, we don't know right. either. So we're about to do the research. And it turns out that we're all spoiled by the video that you get on your on your traditional phone and yep. any camera that's under 500 bucks. So when you get into this world, it's it's all caca. It's all garbage. It's like it's the beginning of it all. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just the beginning. Out. This is the infancy of this technology. So um, so much so that they're already discounting this and getting ready to destroy it. And they're going to come out with a whole new model at NAB. Nikon is talking about a new model. Theta has a new model. And then uh, Insta360 has a 4K model that they want to send us because- uh, Yeah, they have a better version yeah. of this. It, it's not uh, that you, you can use your iPhone with. It doesn't plug into your iPhone. This actually goes like on the, here's your iPhone. It goes on the bottom upside of it. Down, it yeah. goes upside down. You plug it in and then we don't have this charge. And another thing is you have to take your case off, which, so I don't have any of that ready. This is not charged and I have a case on, so. Well, if I'm going to take my case off, I'm going to use this instead. Yeah. What? what? So we, the 360 uh, tests were really interesting. I didn't, uh, I agree with Tim that it's just, I don't know. It's just a little gimmicky to me right now. And yeah, it's just I want there. them to be better. I want the, I want everything to be better. I want the video to be better. I want the pictures to be better. And I want to feel like I'm there in the world. And right now it's like blurry. Like for example, the, the focal, the focal length on these are terrible. I don't this, this understand. One's, this one's less than five feet. So it's, wow, it's, it's just so small. Uh, and the, the new one's like twenty or thirty. Yeah, the feet new or one's supposed to be better. But uh, so yeah, the, I guess. The, the, I, I don't know if you've seen the. You, I know you've seen the views. So I finally got. Yeah, the views. Is, I, I've got an email from them that it's going to ship to me in May. Of course, after NAB. Of course. Uh, but I saw this at CES and. You know, it looked really amazing. I mean, but who knows, right? This is all yeah, such the proof territory, you know. Yeah, so the, the proof's in the pudding. And the reason why I think even you like our test is that it doesn't matter what Stephanie or I think about 360. You can go to rampant360.net and we put up every single video and photo that we shot. And uh, and many of it was shot on all in the same rig at the same time. So you can load them up all at the same time and, and actually compare and contrast in real time. And, uh, and that's what our clients really want. So, uh, oh, thanks for the URL. So, yeah, it's rampant360.net, and uh, it, it's up there, and it's got, oh, wow, it's probably got three or four categories of, of motion and yeah, still Yeah, it's really nice that and, they're all stacked, the yeah. website, so you can, like Sean said, you can play them all together, make your own decision, and see if anything would work for you. Um, I like to say that that 360 right now, un, in this category, there are lots more expensive Cirque shooting with red rigs and all that stuff. That's like way out of our out of our price range for this shootout. Uh, but for this, uh, you can you know I, I sort of see it as a, something to like impress your friends, bring it to a family or, function, or, or, or sell your house or a realtor. Yeah, or, a for realtors. I mean, uh, there's know. some stuff that's really uh, has some good uses for. But I we, think we it's have still a, we new. have a side business that's a travel company and uh, uh, cruise companies pay us to document and and so 360 photo is a wonderful way because you know. Yes forced perspective on, on a potential uh, vacation is not okay. But mm -hmm. uh, but like Tim said, there's no real reason uh, for most people to jump into 360 right now because we don't know what, you know, there's really no narrative. How do you, how do you, you know, test for, or how do you prepare for what's going on all around you? You know, it's just, it's, it's fun and it's kitschy, but it, uh, there's only a few people really doing it and doing well. And I think Cirque du Soleil is doing the best so far. I mean, yeah, that's what, when, I got, when I got the, uh, the Insta360, I was just thrilled that, and I remember bringing it out. I took it to Old Town, Pasadena, walked around, um, and, and I was getting these comments that all I see is your feet. All I see, I'm like, what are you, it's 360. How can you see just my feet? Scroll around, you know? But I guess there was like a glitch. It wasn't working. And, and um, when I watched it, when I got home, I was like, my God, this is so pixelated. It was like yeah. awful, 
you know, yeah. think, think uh, of this as like the first cell phone or the first DVD player or the first CD player, you know, we're well, just, this is more like your beeper before the cell phone. Yeah, for real, <laughs> for real. It's just uh, five years from now or even two years from now, we're all going to laugh at this thing. It's cool looking. It looks like a prop from oblivion, but it's, yeah. it's, really, <laughs> it does. it's really just not all that usable. The good, the good thing is though, if you go to ramp 360.net, we worked really hard to try to figure out, okay, well, how do I make the current technology work? Yeah. And uh, because it's, it's, it's just not that great. And you don't want to be in the shot. Remember our clients, uh, for their for their race style thing, they wanted their customers to be in the or their people to be in the shots. But for most people, that you don't want to be in the shot. So we found these great little uh, uh, remotes. Like for this is a, a Batman style remote for the Nikon, which lets you remote trigger photos and videos, so you can be pretty significant distance away. Yeah. And the Samsung has one as well. So is, is that made by Nikon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is everything is Nikon or Samsung. Um, yeah. I, I, at this point in time, I wouldn't trust any third party hardware just because the things are changing so rapidly that. I just, I just, I mean, and then you've got to really think of, of using more of a, like something like this. Let me see. Uh, one of these little tripods. Oh yes. Yeah. Straight up. It uh, doesn't have handles or anything. And that way it just sticks there in the middle. Yep. Because and it's going to see everything. You can yeah. see that exact tripod on rampant360.net, this match read, right? Well, then that's really popular. Right. Uh, and so then. What Michael uh, just said is, is Michael just said. So what I'm hearing is, wait until 360 gets more advanced. Yeah, if you don't yeah. want to be an early adopter, this is not for you. If you want to play, uh, you know, uh, the Samsung is at 200, Theta is at 200, and the Nano is at 200. So uh, not super expensive to get in and play, just to just to get a fundamental understanding of it. But you're going to realize very quickly, like, well, how do I share this with my friends? You can't. You have to upload it to Facebook, to YouTube, or have a website with a plugin that will take Equal Rectangular and wrap it on a sphere. Well, that's not widely available. And, and if you notice when you go on YouTube, you're taking a serious quality hit. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, it's, yeah. it's already a bad quality. That, that's the thing. We get asked this all the time. A 4K 360 camera is a 4K frame being wrapped around. Once you push into the sphere, sorry, once you push into the sphere, you're already in an HD environment now. So you're not even at 4K. So yeah. if you have an HD sphere and you push in, you're at 720 or less. So the resolution it almost immediately deteriorates. And there's no, there's no real way of having, I mean, it seemed like the Nikon one was the clearest of them all. Um, what, what I, I honestly see this uh, for businesses that want to do a walk around. This is my, yeah. Yep. or, or, uh, or for uh, realtors, you know, mm -hmm. Hey, let's go explore this house together. And, and uh, it would be awesome to, uh, uh, to go out to like a Facebook live and say, um, you know, uh, here we are today. This is uh, uh, Steph and Steph's uh, real estate group, and <laughs> and today I'm going to show you uh, this beautiful uh, alligator-free house, and uh, we're going to walk around. And if you guys have questions, and you can see the comments, and you can say, "Oh, you want to see what the pool looks like?" And you know, and you can scroll yeah, around. Exactly. exactly. So, I mean, I see, I get it um, for those kind of things. I don't personally see a narrative film being made like this yet. I think it's it's far from it. I know yeah. lots yeah. of the pro um, apps, uh, Facebook. I mean, um, uh, uh, Final Cut Pro and and Premiere have play, have the ability to do stuff in 360. Um, but once once you're once you've gone through the process, yes, none of them as of right now, none of them stitch. can can stitch. Can and none stitch. Of them they all have to come in stitched. Yeah. Right. Well, they, no, they have to come in stitched they and equal rectangular. Yeah, so there's flat. two steps, basically stitching and flattening, yeah. and then you can bring it in and edit it. So it's like back in the day when you had to transcode all your video just to bring it into uh, to Final Cut. Is right. we're going we're going back two steps where there's this process with multiple apps before you get to a file that you can actually bring in. So to produce everything you see at Rampant360.net took us several days because it's all that extra work. Except this one. Except for this one. This one's straight into the box. So that one I can drag right into one of my that, editing yes. systems. That's, okay. That, I mean, we've caught a lot of flack for this, but that's why I rated the Nikon the highest. It's not because I, I'm paid by Nikon or whatever. As a matter of fact, if I had to pick the sexiest one, it's this thing. Who doesn't want to walk around with this space machine? Yeah, Everybody I like does, that. You know? But the okay. point is, the point is the stitching. I mean, you, you, you record it to an SDHC card, just like a GoPro. You pop it out. You put it in your, your Mac or your PC. You pull it into your editor, and you're good to go. I mean, that's just regular video 101. The rest of this stuff is all two, three, and four more steps before you get to that process. So once I've got that video into, say, Premiere Pro, um, I bring it down into a timeline. Uh, mm -hmm. what, is, what, what are my specs on my timeline? Can it be just a 1080 timeline? If yeah, I want? yeah. It, it, you edit it like you normally would. And, uh, and uh, they have all these great tools like uh, Taurus, uh, Metal. Uh, they all have viewers and, and players that you can do it. You can even actually hook up uh, your glasses if you really want to work in 360 as you're editing. It's not as cool as it sounds. <laughs> um, it's certainly fun to do once, but it's not what you think it is. And then all you do is on your export, especially on a Premiere, you just check a little box saying, hey, this is VR, and all it's doing is inputting some 
some metadata so Final Cut or YouTube can read it and go, oh, hey, this is an echo rectangular file. I know what to do with this. Ah, okay. Well, that's that's, good. That, that's a bright thing here. I like that. Yeah, um, well, yeah it's, not, it's not that it's bad. It's just that everyone on YouTube is misinforming people because we're in the Wild West right now. So that was our, that was our client's mission is like we need a straightforward, honest review of what we're getting ourselves into. And the reality right. is – the, the reality is the only camera they picked was the Nikon because they don't have time to stitch 20 different teams worth of cameras. Yeah. They're, not, they're like, no, not going to happen. So yeah. so that aside, um, the best image was still the Nikon or which one was it? I, I think across the board, the best uh, video was the Nikon and the best photos uh, would, e would either be Theta or the Nano. I mean, one thing, one thing I didn't like about this, the Theta, was that uh hey theta bump theta bump all right <laughs> was that uh, I, I remember being in hawaii i was on, on a little boat out to perla harbor and i was shooting this great video like wow and then when i got there um or later that night in the hotel i wanted to bring it into my phone to edit it or, or to share it or whatever and it, it only transfers like wi-fi yeah. And, and it was taking like a billion years to get the yeah. video over. And I was like, oh, this is stupid, you know? So I still yeah. think it's in there. I haven't even looked at it for a long time. That's uh, well, the, you can at least bring the theta in through image capture on the, on the Mac or, or bring it in on the PC. But the problem with the theta, like all these other ones, is that, um, well, with the theta specifically, is the battery and the storage are internal. So once you're done, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it might be small enough to fit in your pocket, but now I got to carry a laptop or some yeah. other way of getting <laughs> yeah. the footage. So, yeah. Form factors now has been negated. So, uh, and then, and then I, once I, once I bring the footage in though, um, let my laptop um, isn't. Don't they have an app that's PC yeah. only? Oh uh, no, no. The only the only the only that's PC only would be the Samsung. Everybody else okay. has some kind of a Mac or something. They're not okay. great, but they're again. So, all these so if I bring it into your image garbage. capture, you said right? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, then, and then from there, can I bring it into an editor? Or no, that's not ready no. yet. Okay. No, you have to run it through the Theta app. Uh, of, and see, the thing about the Theta app, the, what, what they want, what they want you to do is they want you to trim, and then upload directly uh, to, outside to of Theta. Theta. They yeah. don't want you to go into an editor, but in reality, just trimming is is not what you want to be doing. You probably want to put a little piece together, maybe add some text, whatever you yeah. know. So. Uh, and 360 text is fun to play with, but it's always much bigger than you think it is. So I'll yeah. be learning that. No, but uh, yeah, so uh, all in all, unless you're really, uh, really just eager to jump into this market and you're not willing to spend, I mean, the Ozo is what, $45,000? $45,000. Is it the Ovo or the Ozo? Ovo. Ovo, Ovo. Ovo yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Nokia is 45 Gs, and that's what it starts at. It's a, it's a red camera, basically. So if you're really going to do this for real, get a, get a red rig or get that GoPro rig from Freedom. Right. Um, but you're still talking, like, what is well, it? Well, how many GoPros Ovo's? do you need? Yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's like either 8 or 16, something. So it's not going to be cheap, right? So And then you got to bring in all the footage. Oh, yeah. my and God. And stitch all that. That and, sounds you know. horrible. Yeah. I feel yeah. bad for the, uh, the intern in, in Hollywood that's having to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's, for real. It's it's just not where and in a year from now, none of this will be a thing. It's it'll all be done in the hardware or they'll become smart about it if they want this to become widely adopted. But right now, the workflow is too intense for it's just not ready for prime time, you know? Forget yep. it. Well, Sean and Steph, thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to see you out in Las Vegas pretty soon. Yes, yeah, excited. <laughs> yeah, we, owe you, we owe you a dinner. Uh, I think it's the other way around, but anyhow, um, and tell us uh where we can find this. It's rampant360.net. Check that out. It's the best. Um, reviews of 360 cameras out there. Um, share that around. And I know you have something up your sleeve for um, you're doing a, a test on on rendering some stuff with. Uh, you want to tell a little sneak about that? Oh yeah. So um, up until it's been probably 15 years since we've had a PC in the building, and uh, part of this project, uh, the client did not accept our Mac workflow. So they actually dropped off a, an Alienware box that they bought at Best Buy. So we're like, okay. I put a little bit more RAM in it, and. Uh, and I thought, I thought, okay, well, let's just see what everyone's talking about. Let's see if uh, PCs are actually faster than Macs or whatever. And we ran a free project file that you can go to 4kfree.com and you can test it yourself on your machine. And we ran it, we compared it to the uh, Mac Pro uh, trash can, the 5K iMac, and this uh, Alienware, which is here on set. And the Alienware was within 10 seconds of it and it was half the price. So, wow. And that's wow. a cheap million where if I, you know, the average Mac that we were, we were testing was about 3,500, four grand. So if I put $4,000 into a PC, it would destroy the Mac any which way that you could think of. Yep. So it's really frightening to know that uh, an i7 quad core with 32 gigs of RAM and a 1080 uh, video card was as fast or better than the iMac 5K or the Mac uh, 6 core trash can. So Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And you have a whole thing written up that you're going to share soon. So I'll link to everybody and let them see all that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for being on the show. Thank you everyone for watching episode one of our uh, uh, mobile. What did I call it again? Mobile mobile video, uh, mobile talk. video talk. That's my yeah. my brainstorm. Um, all right, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks everybody for showing up. Thanks, and, Thanks everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye, everybody.